This is a revision video for the second topic in AQA GCSE Physics and Combined Science, Electricity. There are nearly 100 purely factual recall questions in this video. Once you've memorised the key facts in the physics specification, you'll be ready to move on to questions that ask you to complete calculations and apply your knowledge. Check out the description for a link to the questions and test yourself or make flashcards before using this video to check that you know all the right answers. The first 14 questions are all about recalling the symbols for the various different components in electrical circuits. These include the open switch, the closed switch, a cell and a battery, a diode, a resistor and a variable resistor. An LED is a light emitting diode, so the symbol is the same as a diode but with two arrows to represent the light being emitted. A lamp or bulb looks like this, a fuse not to be confused with a resistor, a voltmeter, an ammeter, a thermistor or temperature sensitive resistor, and finally a light dependent resistor. Again, those arrows represent light, but this time they're coming in rather than going out. Current can be defined as the flow of electrical charge, and it's measured by an ammeter. An ammeter should always be connected in series. The equation linking charge, current and time is charge flow is current multiplied by time. Charge is measured in coulombs, and current is measured in amperes, although we tend to call it amps. Either one is fine for your exams, and the symbol is a capital A. Time for this equation should be measured in seconds. In a series circuit, the current is the same at all locations. Potential difference is current multiplied by resistance. Voltmeters are used to measure the potential difference across a component, so they should always be connected in parallel. Potential difference is measured in volts, and resistance is measured in ohms. The first required practical in the electricity topic involves calculating the resistance of wires of different lengths. And in order to do this, you're going to need a circuit that looks like this one. You have a power supply, ideally a variable one, which you can set as low as possible, an ammeter and a voltmeter, which will allow you to take the readings that you'll use to calculate resistance, your wire, which here I've represented with the symbol for a resistor, and also a variable resistor. The reason for this is that without any other components in there, the current in the circuit will get very high, and this would cause the wire to get very hot and its resistance to be very high. We don't want that, so we need a source of resistance. So you add in a variable resistor. So your first step is to assemble the circuit like this, and you determine the length of the wire using some crocodile clips. So you want one very long piece of wire that you can set to a particular length by moving those crocodile clips. And this will ensure that the diameter of the wire and the material that the wire is made from stay the same, as these are important control variables for your investigation. You then want to set the power supply as low as you can, so something like one volt, because you want to minimize heating of the wire. Then you use the ammeter and the voltmeter to record the readings. Then you can change your independent variable, which is the length of the wire. So you move the crocodile clips in order to change its length, and then you repeat the readings. You then use your ammeter and your voltmeter readings to calculate the resistance for each length of wire. The longer a wire, the higher its resistance, and this is a directly proportional relationship. So as you double the length of the wire, you double the resistance. The reason for this is the interaction between the electrons and the positive ions that they're going past. You have to remember that positive ion does not only contain positive particles, there are still electrons on the outside of it. And so as the delocalized electrons come past, they're repelled by the electrons that make up the positive ion. And so the longer the wire, the more ions the electrons are going to interact with and therefore the higher the resistance. As the wire heats up, those positive ions are going to vibrate more and therefore they're going to interact more with the electrons and this is going to increase the resistance. An ohmic resistor is one for which there's a directly proportional relationship between the potential difference and the current. There are three VI graphs you need to be able to draw. As we've just said, the VI graph for an ohmic resistor will be directly proportional. This is different to a filament lamp because the filament lamp will heat up. So as a higher potential difference passes through the filament and it heats up and turns on and glows, that means that the resistance is going to go up. And so this means that as you carry on increasing potential difference, you don't carry on increasing current, and instead you get a sigmoidal curve that looks like this. The VI graph for a diode looks a little bit different, and it only has really a graph in the top right-hand quadrant. 
The reason why we don't see anything in the bottom left, so why you don't get a current flowing if you um, reverse the potential difference, is because a diode will only allow current to flow in one direction. As you heat up a thermistor, it acts in the opposite way to a wire. So whereas a wire resists more as it gets hotter, a thermistor resists less. You could use this in something like a thermostat. So as the temperature increases, the resistance decreases, allowing current to flow, and this could allow a fan or air conditioning unit to turn off. The resistance of a light dependent resistor decreases as lights turn on. In other words, circuits with an LDR in them will have current flowing when it's light outside. This means you could use it for something like turning on an alarm clock or a radio that comes on in the morning. But you can also use them together with NOT gates in order to turn on lights as it gets dark outside. To measure the resistance across a component, we use a very similar setup to how we measured it across the wire. So here you've got a lamp with a voltmeter across the component and the ammeter just in series. And you can then use the readings on the voltmeter and the ammeter to calculate what the resistance would be. Here's an example of a series circuit involving a battery, two lamps in series, and also an ammeter. If you have a battery that has four 1.5 cells, then the total potential difference across that battery is just the potential difference of the four cells added together because they're wired together in series. So four lots of 1.5 would give you a potential difference of six volts. If this six volt battery is in a series circuit with two identical lamps, then the potential difference across each lamp will be half of the total, so three volts. If each lamp has a resistance of 1.5 ohms, then assuming there are no other components, the total resistance of the circuit will be three ohms, because you can just add up the resistance of components in series. If we have a parallel circuit with two lamps in parallel, it would look like this. If the battery has a potential difference of six volts, well, each lamp receives six volts because each one of the branches gets the full potential difference. To measure the resistance in a parallel circuit, we multiply the product of the branches by the sum of the branches. So R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which in this instance is 2.25 divided by three, which is 0.75 ohms. The overall resistance of a parallel circuit will be less than the resistance of either one of the branches. The formula to calculate this is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. DC is direct current. It's what happens when the current always flows in one direction, as it does in a simple circuit using a cell. AC is alternating current, and it happens when the current changes direction. So for instance, if the alternating current frequency is 50 hertz, that means that the direction changes 50 times a second. The mains electricity supply in the UK is AC, and it has a frequency of 50 hertz. It has a potential difference of 230 volts. The live wire in Britain is brown, the neutral wire is blue, and the earth wire is yellow and green stripes. The live wire is on the bottom right, like BR for brown. The neutral wire is on the bottom left, as in BL for blue. And the earth wire is at the top or in the middle. The live wire carries the alternating potential difference from the supply. The neutral wire completes the circuit. And the earth wire is there as a safety feature to stop the appliance from becoming live. The potential difference between the live wire and the earth wire should be 230 volts. The earth wire only carries a current when there's a fault in the electrical circuit. The pins of the plug are made of brass because it's a very good conductor being mainly made of copper but also it's harder than copper so it doesn't bend so easily. And then the casing of the plug is made from plastic because this is a good electrical insulator. The fuse in the plug is there to melt and break if an electrical surge happens. The equation connecting power, potential difference and current is P equals I times V or in other words power is current times potential difference. Power is measured in watts and power is also current squared times resistance. Power is also energy divided by time, where energy is measured in joules with a capital J. We can also connect energy, charge flow and potential difference using the equation energy equals charge flow multiplied by potential difference. The National Grid is a system of cables and transformers designed to link power stations to electrical consumers. The step-up transformers are used to increase the potential difference. 
The reason for this is that we need the power to be at a fixed level based on how much electricity consumers need. Power has two components, potential difference and current. So if potential difference is high, then current can be low. And we want the current to be low because the higher the current is, the more the wires will heat up. And that would lead to the loss of energy because the atmosphere is being heated. So using a step-up transformer, we can increase the potential difference, thereby lower the current and thereby minimize energy losses. The step-down transformers are then there to decrease the potential difference to a safe level for the consumers. The Bohr model or nuclear model of the atom consists of a small dense nucleus with protons and neutrons surrounded by electrons orbiting in shells and then most of that atom is actually empty space. Those small very very light electrons can be removed by friction but this only leads to substances becoming electrically charged when they are electrical insulators. If you think about something like a metal, you could lose a few electrons, but then other electrons would just move to take their place. And so overall, it's very hard for a charge to build up. When two substances are rubbed on one another, electrons are transferred from one to the other. And the one that gains the electrons becomes negatively charged, and the one that loses the electrons becomes positively charged. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found that a useful introduction to your revision for Physics Unit 2. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Physics videos coming soon. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found that a useful introduction to your Unit 2 Physics revision.